We have seen the need uh, need of internet governance in the earlier presentation and internet governance means that uh, uh, regulating, monitoring the uh, cyberspace which is a global reach and it needs a close coordination of multiple stakeholders and mutual agreements. That's what we have seen in the entire earlier presentation. In this presentation, we talk about the, how the internet governance is being facilitated and the areas in which the internet governance is being applied and the, the, the people and institutions involved in the internet governance. The, these are the three areas we look into this presentation. So process in, the, in terms of facilitating internet governance, uh, the means internet governance refers to the rules and policies, standards, pr practices that coordinate and shape global cyberspace. That's a basic crux of internet governance. And as we are um, repeating the same point, the internet is a network of networks. It's a vast network of inter independently managed networks. It's a collection of networks. That's called internet. It's not one network. It's a collection of network of networks. That's what we used to call that. It's the ind independently managed different networks. And it's been connected. So if you collate all the network, that's become internet. And uh, but if the different networks operate in the different uh, levels, different technological platform, different gadgets and everything, but needs to be compatible. All the networks need to be compatible, then only the information flows from one network to another network. And it's uh, cutting across all the network, the information, whatever format, go, it should flow uh, without much restriction. For that, I think the, the communication uh, protocols and the information flow should have globalized, global standardized data communication protocols. So the protocol should be common across all the networks. Then, then only we can uh, facilitate the information flow without barriers. Because uh, the, uh, that's how because of mobile to computer to laptop and through either wire through or without, uh, through satellite or wireless level, it's a text or video, everything should coordinate yeah, that should be compatible while handling the information because that needs to be that is called protocols communication protocols primarily it deals with the internet protocol or TCP or UDP DNS uh, these are technical areas but remember that these are background infrastructure background me mechanism in which we are communicating we are discussing we are changing we are exchanging information so uh, luckily these are all standardized the last 20 years time by the, by the contribution by many players. So that's a, one of the major outcome from the internet governance. The technicality, the technical protocols are almost yes, standardized. Of course, there is a lot of developments are happening to incorporating an application side in a different instruments in different uh, areas. So that's a one, uh, one dimension of the internet governance process, the technicality standardization of protocols that has, we have achieved a lot in that area. So, thirdly, the common adoption and use of these protocols unify the world of information and communication like never before that. And uh, wherever uh, the information is being generated and it will reach you whether you are accessing in uh, mobile or you are accessing in uh, computers, whether through YouTube video or through text to Facebook account or through a radio channel or podcast, the facilities, services are enormous. But the protocols may be facilitating without interference, the information flows without interference. That's a major success of internet governance so far. And millions of digital devices and massive amounts of data, software applications and in electronic services have become compatible to each other. Internet, this massive structure created a new environment, a complex and dynamic cyberspace. So that's a major outcome from the, this kind of close coordination of multiple stakeholders so far in the last 25 years of internet experience. It also, the internet also created a new forms of crime because we were discussing about that the, the internet started without heavy regulation that gave openness, that gave innovation, that gave a lot of application side. But equally, this cyberspace, dynamic and complex cyberspace created new forms of crime, abuse, surveillance and conflict through the cyberspace, through the uh, computer mediated platform. 
Internet governance is the process whereby cyberspace participants resolve these conflicts over these problems and develop a workable order. So that's the role of internet governance. Internet governance raises the crucial issue of how the internet is governed sustainably as a global resource and how critical internet resources such as domain names, IP addresses needs to be allotted and how global DNS infrastructure including a root server needs to be managed. These are the major challenge because the domain names as you are saying it is a uh, www.google.com or india.gov or igno.ac.in these are domain names and who is controlling all these names? Somebody should assign this name, right? And for the newspaper, there is a registrar of newspaper, registrar of newspaper of India, like that. There is a uplinking and downlinking permissions are given by the ministry. Like that, somebody, we were arguing that this platform is a global and multiple stakeholders are involved. One government is not owning the platform. Then who is giving the domain name? Who set the standard? And who is allotting IP addresses? And who is managing the root server. So that's uh, how the internet governance play a role in managing this major fundamental uh, uh, building blocks. Cyberspace is regarded by many as a global commons and has been recognized as a fifth domain, vital for national security, uh, unilateral control of the domain, dominance, dominance of privileged groups in controlling key assets like a root server, and non-transparency in the current governance regime. These are the, some of the issues, current issues of resolving the, the role of multiple stakeholders in managing the cyberspace and exclusion of other countries from global governance of internet as a potential to harm the commercial, economic and security interests of the nations in the long run. These are the concerns. We have seen that uh, how the technicality manage the compatibility of information flow from multiple networks. Similarly, the infra infrastructure created a conflict, crime, abuse, somebody, some agency needs to be regulated on these areas. Similarly, that uh, commercial and economic and security interest needs to be protected from the people who are not able to represent it in an adequate manner. Internet governance is not the product of an institutional hierarchy, unlike the government system in any, in any nation state, but rather it emerges from the decentralized bottom-up coordination of tens and tens and thousands of mostly private sector entities across the globe. And private sector entities are one contributing enormously in the expansion of internet, internet and cyberspace. But equally, we have studied that and a lot of power is being accumulated in the private hands. We have seen the both. The growth mainly, to the, mainly due to the private sector's contribution and that leads to the the corporate dominance in certain areas of internet applications. Often referred to as internet as a stakeholders. The, who are the stakeholders? We are referring to multiple stakeholders. These includes network and service providers, operators, domain name registry, registrars and register, registries, IP address and standards organization, internet service providers and individual users. These are the stakeholders. The multiple stakeholders involvement means one is a technical side, we will take the application side as well. One the technical uh, includes server, uh, network server, IP uh, allotment of IP addresses and domain name registers and uh, ISP internet service providers and individual users. Civil society organization and government also participate alongside these major stakeholders in contributing to the development of technical policy. These are all related to the technical policies then application side of social, economic and commercial security, surveillance, all the application side of the internet is other aspects of the internet government policies. Now we have seen that, that the, the, how a technical uh, standardization helped the, uh, uh, the internet put the proper space, proper network, proper infrastructure, cyberspace that gave a positive and negative uh, uh, outcome and also created a conflict and also contribution by multiple stakeholders. We have given examples of different players. Now we will understand the areas in which one is the technical part, the application side we need to understand where 
the internet governance uh, can play a major role to coordinating and uh, putting a proper policy framework for services and information going beyond the boundaries, beyond the national boundaries. Internet access in emerging and new, newly industrialized countries where the internet penetration is a major challenge, electronic commerce across the borders, intellectual property rights or these are the major topics needs a lot of attention, a lot of deliberation, a lot of mutual consensus for developing a policy framework. Intellectual property rights means there is openness, information is flowing, enormous information is flowing, but the, the, the who are creating the original content, their rights needs to be protected and the commerce, electronic commerce should be across the country. We were discussing that across the countries means multiple governments are involved, multiple policies are needs to be negotiated for better delivery of services between the countries and multiple countries. Many current discussions are less focused on underlying technical layers because that is already standardized. More uh, concerns with the rules governing application side of that and content. Pol content and application that needs a lot of attention because technicality part the last 25 years time a lot of work has been done and is being standardized. Issues in this respect include particularly in the application and content aspect of internet governance includes challenges related to the data protection and freedom of opinion and which illustrate the con basically the conflict arises due to the mainly about the data protection and the freedom of opinion and expression and conflict between the, uh, the different nations in imposing the general rules and transnational nature of the internet. Automatically that how, that's how it influences the, the free flow of information provided the major countries allows the freedom of opinion and data is being protected on intellectual property rights and everything. Many current issues related to the internet governance ranging from the role of algorithms and role of cyber security, artificial intelligence, these are some of the examples. The major challenges are also discussed under other umbrella terms such as digital policy or internet policy. One is application side, content, then digital policy. Demonstrating that the need for international perspective on rules, principles and procedures on the internet continues to grow on the areas in which the internet governance can play a major role. Now as per the UN uh, uh, document, they have identified the four major areas in which the, uh, the internet governance is supposed to play a major role on that. So the, the number one is issues relating to infrastructure and management of critical internet resources, including administration of domain name that we have seen earlier and uh, internet protocol addresses, administration of root server system, technical standards and interconnectedness, telecommunication infrastructure and innovative and convergence technology as well as multilingual uh, multilingualism facilitating multiple language because the unicode and the standardization of keyboards and the inter uh, uh, compatibility of different languages that's also one of the major areas then only that we can the flow of information goes across multiple networks and gadgets this one is a technical aspect as per the un uh, document this is one of the main uh, challenge is a technical management, managing the technical resources. The second important point is, the issues related to the internet, uh, second important point is including spam and network security and cyber crime. One is a technicality and the second major thirst, major area application side is controlling the, uh, the cyber crime and controlling the spam and providing better network security. Third important internet governance issues about intellectual property rights or international trade and the document is stating that the extent to which these matters are being handled, handled consistent with the declaration of principles. And that the fourth important point is issues relating to the developmental aspects of internet governance in particularly capacity building in developing countries and uh, the roles of different stakeholders and their influence, their roles and responsibilities while contributing and negotiating with the policy framework and implementing multiple rules and regulations from different regulatory agencies, service providers and 
the consumers. So these are the four areas in which the internet governance is supposed to play a major role as per the UN document, technicality, uh, security and uh, intellectual property rights and capacity building. These are the, the, we have seen the process, we have seen the, uh, the areas in which the, uh, the internet governance is supposed to work on that. But this, uh, the, uh, we have substantial achievement in terms of close coordination with the multiple stakeholders while creating a technical standardization and compatibility of different networks that we have achieved. The major challenge currently with the application side, content, data protection, digital policy, intellectual property rights and, and services across the different borders. So while uh, developing a very concrete policy framework, certain guidelines, uh, guiding principles are being proposed and that we look into the matter that will help the uh, stake, multiple stakeholders to develop a better policy framework dealing with the, these other new emerging areas of internet governance like a content, application, security, dealing with the say, cyber crimes. One of the main point is the, the, the transparent participation, open and transparent participation. The participation of interested and informed stakeholders in the internet governance process that enables the uh, understanding their respective rules and responsibility. That's what the 2005 World uh, uh, Information Society conference established that the multiple stakeholders need to understand their respective rules and responsibility. That's more crucial uh, while uh, implementing internet governance in multiple areas. And there needs to be a kind of consensus based on the decision making rather than few uh, dominant, dominating uh, players fixing or developing a, a policy framework. The internet governance policy documents should be evolved based on the consensus and mutual negotiations. And there must be a kind of collective ownership, collective ownership leads to the better environment. Better the environment means that enables the participation of multiple uh, people including the individual, individual users. And uh, it's the, uh, the new areas in which the internet governance should play a very pragmatic role and the role and the approaches should be based on the, the ground reality. The internet governance is not confined to only organizations or uh, government, major corporate groups or government bodies, but should allow the, the, uh, the interested people, individuals can participate in contributing their experiences and their expectations. The lastly, the, the, the governance should not restrict the cyberspace for within the very closed framework rather than it should promote the openness. The openness leads to the innovation. That's what we have uh, uh, experienced in the last 25 years of time. That's what we have seen the, the guiding principles. Now the last segment of this presentation you look at the, the, ma the main stakeholders of internet governance from the beginning in terms of technical uh, works as well as in other areas. Particularly the, uh, the protocols, the protocols like a transmission control protocol or internet protocol where the communication process is being standardized managed by internet engineering task force. That's a one uh, uh, group that uh, standardize the protocols. Secondly, about the uh, compatibility of the information with the different uh, computing devices or mobile devices that's been controlled by worldwide web consortium that they they have taken care about the, the content, the protocols, they have standardized the delivery of information from different nodes, but uh, uh, WW3C they manage the, the delivery is being decoded and encoded properly in the appropriate computing devices. Then there is another institute called Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. They also played a major role in standardizing the technical uh, environment. Then there is a, uh, we, we discussed about the domain names, IP numbers and all. Organizations that manage the resources for global naming and addressing capabilities such as Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, that's uh, the major uh, player uh, allotting the domain names of managing root servers. 
that's uh, what that's a non profit organization affiliated to the us government department though it's uh, a, a voluntary it's a autonomous body but it's based in the us country that's a, a kind of a uh, lot of criticism about icann uh, role in controlling the domain names uh, this is icann uh, controls including the operations of internet assigned numbers authority functions and regional internet registries where the re registration of domain domain names and domain name registries are managed these are affiliated to icnn little control the base is the one organization dominating the domain name registration and uh, operation legislation of root server and everything on that companies that provide network infrastructure such as domain names uh, domain name service dns providers network operators and cloud computing uh, delivery services and internet exchange points they are uh, also playing a major role in managing the uh, cyberspace internet individual and organization that use the internet to communicate with each other they are also one of the main stakeholder other than the the uh, people who have created protocols they managing the domain names and domain name service providers and isps individual internet users also one of the major stakeholders organization that provide education and build capacity for developing and using internet technologies that is also major stakeholders because capacity building is one of the main thrust areas of uh, uh, international uh, priority there are two organization that uh, needs to be focused while de dealing with the stakeholders one is icann another one is internet governance forum icann is established in 1998 under contract to the us department of commerce the internet corporation for assigned names and numbers is a private non profit organization headquarters in california and is being manages the global domain name service dns the icnn is a, a one controls a dns and uh, ip addresses and at all affiliated protocols because since it's a, a kind of us based uh, organization non profit organization but attached with the department of commerce and uh, but many multinational uh, agencies and uh, stakeholders they wanted to have a, a independent body that monitors and controls the infrastructure so that's why internet governance forum was proposed as a an international group of governments and non uh, governmental entities created this inter internet governance forum in 2006 in opposition to icnn in 2006 world summit on information society this is uh, uh, the second one is a more of uh, uh, representative more representation in the controlling the infrastructure internet governance forum because it's being proposed and managed with the help of un uh, agencies and uh, but the but uh, the, the uh, there is a kind of two multiple divisions are existing on the role of icnn there's a criticism about icnn and and then in opposed to criticism internet governance forum got into the prominence and where in the multinational uh, non governmental entities and multiple uh, governments supported the igf forum and both but both are continuously working closely to promote the uh, many policy frameworks while controlling the cyberspace and internet so now you might have gotten a basic idea about why do we need to have uh, cyberspace why, why do we need to have internet governance which is uh, quite uh, uh, different from the mainstream media with the last 25 years of coordination of multiple technical groups we got a, a substantial achievement in uh, standardization of technical platform like the cyberspace now with this environment we are going to apply to multiple areas like a commerce like a security and uh, different flow of information without much barriers and freedom of opinion Uh, freedom of expression and equally protecting the data uh, the intellectual property rights and providing better environment free from the cyber crime these are the areas the challenging areas where the internet governance support needs to play a major role in coordinating multiple stakeholders 
having a consensus and creating a, a better uh, solution to tackle the, the positive and negative side aspect of cyberspace. Now you might have got the idea about the cyber internet governance. In the last uh, two presentations, we were touching the, the, the major areas. A lot of things are happening in this area. In the reading material, we have provided a sufficient links to read more about internet governance. Thank you.